Hey guys, welcome to a new video. I'm starting a series called Swipe to Type, where I'm looking at people's social media and I'm typing them through there. I'm not just stalking people through social media. This is by request. I have a friend. His name is Graham. I met him through Instagram. He is, I believe, a life coach. And he was saying, I've got these videos on Instagram and YouTube and, you know, I've been typed as ESTP. I've been typed as like other types. And at this point, like I'm, I'm just not totally sure. So how about we take a deeper look? And so I had already seen some of his content before, but I really hadn't looked at it completely from the lens of type. Like I'd seen a couple things and been like, hey, you know what, he's, he could be this type. So uh, he sent me some videos and I took a deeper dive. So let's get right into it. Let's start with, uh, let's start with the hero function. So this is what I usually like to do. And it's usually the most obvious thing for people when you're looking at uh, their social media because they want to put their best foot forward. It's just natural. So... The clips that I'm showing are uh, from a video called On Integrity, I believe. And uh, I was like, okay, this guy is a heroic extroverted feeler. He talks about how it takes courage to have integrity in social situations. So he's saying it takes courage to step up and, um, and, to, and to really do the right thing when it would be somewhat easier to do the wrong thing. And this is with reference to... Um, to other people's emotions and the social atmosphere in general. So it's like he, he uses the, uh, the example of someone being bullied. He's saying, you know, it, you're going to have to sacrifice some things if you, uh, if you do the quote-unquote right thing and you, you, know, you stand up for what you believe in. And uh, in that way, you're also being very socially conscious. So just from that, like there's other videos too, but just from that, I was like, okay, this guy is a heroically socially um, conscious extroverted feeler. Okay, that's like my first, um, that's my first hypothesis, if you want to say, uh, or if you will, you know, that's my first guess. Because in a moment where someone shows integrity, they're showing their truest colors. They're showing that they have the willingness to sacrifice something in the moment to uphold and preserve something that they hold dear to them in their core. Integrity is the person who sticks up for the other person who's being made fun of on the bus and who sacrifices a potential relationship with the person who's making fun of that person but lets that person know it's not okay for them and stands up for that person, stands up for their truth, for their belief. We talk about this a lot. It's the ability to be yourself under pressure and the pressure of peers, the pressure of society, right? The pressure of your boss, being yourself and not and not sacrificing who you are, instead sacrificing the thing that doesn't align, which takes so much courage. But integrity, integrity is so integral. Without integrity, without you being able to sacrifice a potential outcome for the right thing, you will be, find it very difficult for you to understand yourself on a deeper level. Integrity allows you to be true to yourself in the moment. And the more often that you can be yourself under pressure, the more you will respect yourself and others will find value and respect you as well. So in order to say that for sure, I have to say, like, that's the same thing as saying, okay, well, this is someone with an auxiliary function of either introverted sensing or introverted intuition. You know, if it's not one of those two, then he's not an extroverted feeler or a dominant extroverted feeler. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I looked at that. Um, I looked at, at other videos. I looked at that video. I looked at other videos and, uh, I've probably got like five minutes of clips for this one. Um, there's definitely more content if you want to check out this guy's stuff. Uh, but going on to the auxiliary function, I said, all right, well, there's, there's clips in an interview that he did where he was talking about how he really loves, um, he really loves fostering other people's inner realizations, or at least the ability for other people to have inner realizations. So he's saying like, you know, look, I look and in my coaching business, I see younger people or the, like the newer generation. Um, I see them getting interested in this stuff. And when they when they come to me, I love helping them realize what they're curious about or have or just have inner realizations in general. I believe he's talking about a movie called Soul in which a it's a pretty cool coincidence. He's talking about a Disney movie, I think, or yeah, Disney movie called Soul, where the, the main character has these inner realizations. So we're really in the territory of introverted intuition here and worked out nicely. I said, okay, well, that's, that is in an area 
of fostering and protecting. It's an area which nurtures and protects others. That is the father archetype in the eight function model or John Beebe's model of typology. Okay, so deep water stuff. Like if you've are if you haven't already heard of this, then there's like it's there's a very small percentage chance that you haven't already heard of John Beebe or the, at least the eight function model, and uh, be watching this video. I don't I don't even see how you could how you could get there. But what I've seen from my generation again, those mid twenty year olds, is that they're starting to show up and are really curious. They're curious. And that's a good thing. Because if they just sit next to us for a little while, they're gonna to start to feel a little better naturally just being in our presence, right? And mine and theirs, right? Uh, but if you get a group of those people together, curiosity really sweet. is yeah. the spark. Yeah. That's all it is. And that's the whole thing, is like, oh. they just need to find your spark. Once you find something you're really curious about, you can be curious about other things. And there's just so much happening in every little thing, right? And so I think like that movie is actually brilliant. And that spark, it didn't even really hit me what that was until you just said that. I was like, oh, that's what they mean by spark. They mean you gotta find something you're curious about. And for 23, it was pizza. She was eating the pizza and she's like, what's this? This is good, I want more. Where do you get it? How do you do it, right? I'm in the chair, I'm in the chair. And I just thought that like, that was just so brilliant and well done. And I thought that just to echo that, I mean, man, when you find something that you're curious about. Sheesh. Okay, so moving on, we move to the shadow side of the father archetype, and that is the Senex. And what you can think of here is like the attitude of a, of a depressing, well, not necessarily depressing in all cases, but like um, a, a depressed or cynical old man. Like if you think of like, um, what's the name of that movie? Like the, like that, uh, that archetype in movies, like cop movies, like the the cop who's like, I'm too old for this shit. You know, that's like kind of the, uh, not the best impression, but it's kind of like the attitude that you get here. And it is an area of limit setting and control. And by by contrast to the clips where I played of uh, introverted intuition, for this person, we have extroverted intuition in the area of the Senex. So you see, you see this person who's very, um, who's very alive when talking about uh, other people having inner realizations and, and meditations on what their life is really about. But when you get to intuitive possibilities, um, intuitive possibilities in the extroverted realm, you have this Senex attitude where he's talking about, oh, um, uh, there's a video called um, something like why I got rid of my TV that he's made on his YouTube. And he's saying, you know, these are the reasons why I got rid of my TV. And he's delving into it, very intuitive possibilities, but a lot of them are negative and inactivating. He's saying, you know, don't, don't spend all your time watching this certain type of content because of, and then intuitive possibilities, right, are the reasoning. So the reasoning is like, it, you don't know where it could take your mental state. There's all these different possibilities, um, intuitive possibilities for where your mental state can go um, if you're consuming this and how, um, how it can affect your psychological energy and all these things. So it was very interesting to see that. And I think that's also the other half of this, Colin, is like, if you don't believe a state of curiosity is possible, then you have already put yourself in position to not be able to experience it. And I feel like there's a lot of that too. Like, I don't believe I can feel that way anymore. Like, I don't know, like, this is how it is when you get older. This is what adult, adulting is code for. I don't have fun anymore without feeling stressed. So I think we need to be very aware of what we are putting into our minds, right? Which is not something you, you know, you've heard this before, right? What, what, you, what goes in is what's coming out. So if you're watching TV all the time and it's just putting nonsense into your mind or it's all gossip or it's all humor or it's all um, scandal or it's all action, like that's what you're seeing in the world. That's what you're gonna unconsciously see, subconsciously see in the world just sitting there watching and downloading endless hours of nonsense, right? Only to see that in the external world, right? Only for the movies and the, and the shows and those things to shift our vibration unconsciously so that we attract more of that unconsciously, right? And if the, if the shows are, are, like I said, scandalous and the shows are aggressive and angry, masculine energy, then that's what we're gonna be attracting. Uh, okay, so on to the next, on to the next one. We are at extroverted sensing here. Okay, so the puer, or male child in Latin, or if you're really into Jung, then you would know that this would be the puer eternus, or eternal child. 
So we, this is an area of immaturity in play. It's an endearing, vulnerable child. Okay, so this was another one that was cool for me because uh, Graham is talking about how, um, and it's in the same video of why I got rid of my TV. And he's saying, when I was a kid, I, I had all these activities that, um, that I was approaching from a very immature stance. Well, why? Because I was a kid and I was playing around. But when I do it now, he's saying like as, as an adult, when I engage in these activities, I have to, um, I have to try to be, I have to try to be measured when I do it because I can become very childish. He's saying like, oh, I can become very competitive in a way that's not healthy for me, or it takes up a lot of my time when I really should be doing other things. So you could easily make a case for extroverted sensing being uh, Graham's vulnerable child, or at least through the lens of, of typology. Like typology isn't the only part of Jung's psychology that you could explain this stuff with, but if you're looking at it from a typological quote unquote um, lens, then you could say, okay, well, extroverted sensing uh, is applicable here. He's saying, you know, these things like playing sports really competitively, playing a ton of video games. He's like, I, when I was a kid, I loved playing a lot of video games and I loved playing sports. And that's, that's most of what I spent my time doing, but I need to be careful when I do that stuff now. But for myself, there's a couple things that I've noticed when I do watch TV or play video games, etc. Like I said, I've been in that place before where I've been for sure a video game addict growing up. I grew up in like the place, the Nintendo 64, PlayStation 2 era where like that was the thing to do. And I literally spent half my time playing sports and half my time playing video games. And there's just so many interesting things that I've noticed when I'm engaged with um, video games and engaged with TV, how different I act when I'm not. Right, or how, how, I should say this, how much more clear my head is when I don't. I get agitated easily. I can't accept defeat. I wanna keep playing until I win. Or if I lose, I like get irritated and now I carry that energy with me for whatever I do for the rest of the day. And then the shadow side to that, this is, a, I, I, I thought this was also crazy too, but it was pretty funny. This was the first thing that I actually saw through his Instagram where I was like, that is mischievous introverted sensing. So he was saying, oh, I'm ESTP, I was like, I don't think this guy's ESTP, you know, not saying that he's not because I don't know him personally. So maybe I could have this all wrong. But when I saw this, I saw introverted sensing in the area of ma manipulation and paradox. It's a very mischievous area, which creates double binds and circumvents obstacles in some instances. So how did I see this? Well, I saw this through his propensity to take very cold ice baths and pour uh, pour ice on the people in a very mischievous manner. So he's saying uh, the reason he does this is he, he loves to get pumped up before work by taking an ice bath. But he also, um, I don't know if chides is the correct word, but also or provokes because it doesn't it doesn't necessarily just because it is a a unconscious archetype doesn't and I have it in red doesn't necessarily mean that it's negative. Uh, but he basically what he's doing is he gets um, he gets some ice or he gets snow and he puts it into a bath and then he just soaks himself in it. Okay, that's like one thing, but it's also another for to get other people to do it too. That is very mischievous, and I'd say that fits with the, well with the archetype of the trickster. Um, there are some other things I was going to say on this too. Oh, oh, so a lot of people don't really understand because a lot of people that are interested in this type of stuff are not necessarily. Um, for, just for whatever reason, uh, people are not often, people that are interested in this stuff are not often sensation type, types or lead sensation types. So I may have to do a little bit of um, explanation or give a little background for what introverted sensing actually tells you. So introverted sensing tells you, among other things, is it too hot? Is it too cold? Um, does um, is, is, is there something off about this room? Um, do I, do I, am I hungry? Do I need, or does, and not, not necessarily just am I hungry, but am I hungry for this? You know, if you look at a certain, if you're cooking or something and you make food, it's like you taste, you taste some sauce or something like that. And you're like, you know what, does this need more salt? Does this need more, you know, ETC, whatever. Um, someone who is a poor extroverted or introverted sensor might not be able to have, might not have had too much experience with those things. It might not be too discerning there. So it's like, uh, I think this needs a, uh, a little bit more salt, pours in way too much salt. You know, just for example, that's not always the case. So this is why I said that this is very mischievous because it's like, okay, obviously an ice bath is something that, I mean, your introverted sensing would tell you is not something that most people want to be doing. Um, 
like for example, if you, uh, if you're a dominant introverted sensor and you do happen to like to take ice baths, you may not suggest this to other people because your tastes are so specific and your discernment is so specific in that or so uh, so strong in that area that you may also know, hey, not everybody is going to be super um, excited about getting into an ice bath. Uh, ice? So we're, we have some natural ice outside. It's called snow. Oh, my God. We're going to shovel a big fucking shovel full of snow. No! Dump that shit in there and Oliver's going to freeze his ass off. Yeah. Everybody wins. Okay, here we go. Jeez. Oh, oh my God! God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, that's snow. <laughs> Whoever's watching this, that's snow. <laughs> oh, my gosh! I'm here. Oh. These people. Now, how much, so what is all in this right now? Oh, you just dumped snow on the room. There's ice from the trading post, water. Ice from the freezer, <laughs> ice from Michael's cooler, and snow. I'm trying a new one today. You sit in the bath, and you put it on cold, and then you let you put the thing on, and then you let the water fill up, so you slowly get cold. Oh. <laughs> I got myself. <laughs> this is how I get pumped up before I uh, do my calls with my clients. So. Some rare behind the scenes, scenes, some rare behind the scenes shit. Okay, so that's just one thing. I thought I thought it was pretty funny. Um, how much time do we have? All right, we're at about 11 minutes, and I think that's good. I'm gonna keep it there. Uh, that's all of the clips that I watched. I didn't watch. Um, I didn't watch a whole lot, but I think this is definitely enough. So, what recap? What we're missing is introverted thinking um, in the inferior function. We're missing demonic extroverted thinking. We're also missing. Um, opposing or in the in the shadow archetypes you could say quote unquote shadow archetypes we're missing uh, introverted feeling in the opposing personality so um when i do these videos i'm going to expect that those things are not going to be shown because i'm not necessarily trying to talk about people's inferiority complex or things that undermine them or ways that they act in uh in a defensive uh, in a defensive manner such as um challenging people or offending people like that's or being self-critical that's that's something that i mean i'm sure this i'm sure this i'm not like saying oh this guy doesn't want me to include this stuff I'm not saying oh graham doesn't want me to include his inferiority complex therefore i'm not doing it it's just no in general these aren't things i'm looking to show so you shouldn't expect me to be showing them maybe i will in the future but uh, i think for the celebrity videos or like the, the movie stars and stuff like that everybody's familiar with that's like generally considered more acceptable whereas it could be a little bit offensive on or irresponsible on my part to be talking about uh ways that people are undermined by them posting to social media you know so uh i'm going to be doing more of these uh with friends of the channel so i'm not just going to be picking people at random but if you are a friend of the channel uh Go ahead and contact me on Instagram if you're interested, and uh, you can send me videos, or I can just check them out myself, and I will start looking at them because this this didn't take that long to make. So, hope you guys like this. Hope you enjoyed it, Graham. Thank you for volunteering, and thanks for being a good sport. I'm going to uh, I'm going to send Graham the uh, this this uh, rough draft, I guess you could say, and then if he okay's it, I'm going to post it. So. If you guys are seeing this part, then he was okay and on board with it, and he liked it too, and he agreed with the, the analysis. So once again, hope you guys had fun, and I will see you in the next round.